Hello and welcome to Meep's Math Matters. I'm Meep and today I'm going to be talking about infinity. I'm calling this infinity is not a number and this is part one of I don't know how many part series. Not infinite, I promise you. I have a finite time on this earth so we're going to get to it. I want to give you a little warning before I start. don't want to get into it too much but I am requesting that you scrub your mind to a certain extent of what your concept of infinity is. Now, okay, fine, if you're a math major, or if you've taken real analysis and have proven stuff about infinite series and this, that, and the other, fine, you can keep your ideas about infinity. Um, I'm not going to get into real analysis. I'm not going to get into um, calculus necessarily. Um, there's enough to play with infinity uh, with some pretty accessible concepts. But the problem is when I have taught people before, of different ages, uh, of concepts that have to do with infinity, uh, what they thought infinity was or how it behaved was very different from the mathematical treatment. And so I just want you to be warned. There may be a few things that just don't make sense to you. That's fine. You know, watch it a couple times, email me, whatever. Um, it is a difficult concept. And partially what's difficult about it is infinity means different things in different contexts. I'm going to start out, okay, first our nice little symbol of infinity, the lazy eight. Um, and we're going to start out with what's called countable infinity, or countably infinite. Okay. This is the most accessible of the infinities. And we've already seen this actually with the proof of the infinitude of the primes. So in the context of countably infinite, well, let's look at our counting numbers. One, two, three, four, and so on and so on and so on. And I'm going to put infinity here. But just wanting to note, it's not a number in this context. Okay, this is more like a process. When I say, okay, count, counting numbers going to infinity, well, they don't actually go anywhere. They, it just keeps getting larger and larger. You just add one. You have your really big number, and then you add one. Well, you take infinity, you add one, you get infinity. Well, Numbers don't work wa that way. So I say infinity is not a number. It is more like a process here, more like a description. It's indicating it doesn't end. And so when I say a set of numbers is countably infinite, that means I can make a list. Okay, I can make a list. One, two, three, four. And I have my first number, second number, third number, fourth number, and so on. Okay? And what this is called is a one-to-one -one correspondence. That means for every counting number, I can put a number in my set in relationship to it. I'm going to do um, a very simple example here. And that is the even numbers. Okay. So let me put my counting numbers to the left. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. And what I'm going to pair it up with on the right side, two, four, six, eight, ten. So it's going to be just double of what I was looking at. Now, okay, this is not all even numbers, actually. This is the positive even numbers. But it's actually true for all even numbers as well. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, see, this is, a, this is a little obvious. This is the even numbers. But this is how you show something is countably infinite. As we say in the math biz, um, it's countably infinite if and only if, okay, you can put the numbers 
in a one-to-one -one correspondence with the counting numbers. Okay? And think about this from a finite set of point of view. If you want to know how many numbers or how many things are in a finite set, what you do, you know, I have a bunch of doohickeys, doohickey one, doohickey two, doohickey three. Well, listen to how I'm saying this. I am labeling this. This is number one. This is number two. This is number three. This is number four. Ah, there's four doohickeys. Okay? So I am making a one-to-one -one correspondence with the counting numbers in order with my doohickeys. So if I said I had an infinite set of doohickeys, that means I can line them up, one, two, three, four, etc. Okay, so let me show that a couple other sets of numbers are countably finite, infinite, sorry. The next set we're going to look at is the integers. Now the integers are, you know, you, you have your whole number, 0, 1, 2, 3. So actually, just note, um, if I take my counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., and then I tack on 0, now this is still countably infinite. I just put 0 in correspondence with 1, 1 with correspondence to 2, you know, 3, etc., and my number is just corresponded with number plus 1, so that's fine. But integers go both positive and negative. There's no you know, most negative or small, I shouldn't say smallest, but um, lowest integer and there's no highest integer. A lot of times people will write this as negative infinity, you know, to, you know, negative one, blah, 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 to positive infinity. And the question is, how do I make this list? What's going to be my first, second, third? You know, how can I do this? Because I can't say, okay, I'm going to start with the lowest integer, because there is no lowest integer. I can take whatever my negative billion and whatever, and then subtract one, just like we can add one to get the next number in the sequence going to the right. I can just subtract one going to the left. So how do I get all of the numbers? Okay, so let me write down my counting numbers. Okay, so here's my counting numbers. And what I am going to do is I'm going to start at zero and just bounce back and forth working my way out. Zero will go to one, and then I'll go to negative one. And then I'll go to two, and then I'll go to negative two. Okay, so you see our one to one correspondence here. And you can see that through this procedure, we're going to be able to hit every integer. So here, integers are countably infinite. And really that's all there is to it. Um, now let us consider uh, the prime numbers and that proof we had of the prime numbers before. So if you remember the prime numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, etc., what we had showed was that there was no largest prime number. So if notice, primes, they're a subset of the counting numbers, so it's just some of the counting numbers. We can put them in order, do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And that's the thing. Um, what's crazy about infinite sets, countably infinite sets, is that you can take a subset, just, so just some of the numbers, and put it into a one-to-one -one correspondence with the original set. So as an example, the correspondence we did with the counting numbers to the even numbers, even though, in a sense, even numbers are just half of the counting numbers. And likewise, the counting numbers are a subset of the integers, and the integers are kind of like two times, well, plus one um, in size, but it's still infinite. It's the same infinity. So that's how countably infinite works. And you know if I'm saying countably infinite, there must be an uncountably infinite, and that stuff is really wild. So, as always, remember to spread the math of love, and you can always email me at marypat.gamble at gmail.com. Thank you for your time.